The sine is what is called an odd function, and the cosine is what is called an even function. Those somewhat cryptic sounding names mean that the sine and the cosine of negative x are related to the sine and the cosine of positive x in specific ways. The sine being odd means that the sine of negative x is negative the sine of x. So, for example, the sine of negative 30 degrees is negative the sine of positive 30 degrees, which is negative one half. The cosine being even means that the cosine of negative x is the same as the cosine of positive x. The cosine of negative 30 degrees is the same as the cosine of positive 30 degrees which is the square root of 3 over 2. This statement about the sine and this statement about the cosine, you should know. So this figure from the textbook will hopefully convince you of the statements. Um, the textbook is using T instead of X because it wants to use X for the X coordinate, which I guess makes sense. So here's T and here's negative T. And you see these x coordinates are the same. And these y coordinates are the same except for a negative sign. So the x coordinates being the same is why the cosine of t is the cosine of negative t. And the y coordinates being the same except for a negative is why the sine of negative t is negative the sine of positive t. So all six of the trig functions have properties like this. The sine and the cosine are the only ones that I think are worth committing to memory. I just either look the others up or think them through. If I needed to remember which of the other trig functions are even and which of them are odd. For the record, though, of the remaining four trig functions, the secant is even. The secant of negative x is the same as the secant of positive x. Well, the tangent, cosecant, and secant are odd. So the even functions are kind of the anomaly. The cosine and one divided by the cosine are even. The other trig functions are odd.